Hi Year 3, welcome to this week's spelling session. I hope you're all well, I'm missing you all lots but I'm looking forward to doing some spellings with you today. Before we start, shall we see who's been doing a brilliant job on spelling chef? In third place for last week, it was Noah in 3SB. Well done Noah. Second place went to Austin in 3P. Great job and congratulations to last week's champion which who was Riley in 3H. You can also see the top three in each class. So well done to Noah, Isabel, Charlie, John, Lillian, Cole, Riley, Erin, Matthew, Austin, Samuel and Poppy for your fantastic effort. I wonder who will make their way onto the leaderboard this week. Before I introduce today's learning objective, I think we need to warm our brains up first with a starter. Checking our understanding and our memory of something that we've practiced before. In this case, past tense verbs and how those are spelt. So down here, I've written a list of present tense verbs, but your challenge is to rewrite these verbs, but in the past tense. I'm thinking about how that alteration might affect the spelling. You can do that either on a sheet of paper, a whiteboard, or in your home learning books. So for example, with the present tense verb jump, I want to imagine that's happened in the past sometime. Imagine, let's imagine yesterday. So I'm gonna think of a sentence to put it in to check that it makes sense. Yesterday, Jake the dog jumped into Mr. Gum's garden. So I know that the past tense form of jump is jumped. So I'm gonna try and spell that. I'm gonna use the root word to help me. I wonder if I need to change that at all. J U M P. Now I know to change that into past tense, I need the ED suffix. A suffix is some letters or are some letters that go on the end of words to change the meaning. And in this case, I need the ED suffix to change the present verb, present tense verb jump into the past tense verb jumped. I wonder if for all of these ones, whether you'll just have to add the ED suffix like I did, or whether, especially down in two and three chili, are there gonna be any trickier ones where you might need to alter the root word or some that trick you all together. Have a go, press pause on the video now, have a go, and then press play again and we'll look at some answers together. Good luck. Okay, well done. How did you get on? Hopefully you noticed that for these one chili challenges, they were very similar to jumped and that we didn't have to alter the root word at all. We just needed to add the ed suffix to change them from present tense to past tense. For example, walk can become walked. All I need to do is add the ed suffix. And it was exactly the same for wait as well. Wait is present tense, but if I wanted to change that to past tense, Mr. Gum waited for Jake the dog to leave his garden. All I need to do is add that ed suffix at the end. Now, I wonder if any of you noticed for two chili and three chili that you might have needed to make some slight alterations to how we do it. Now, for these two, dance and move, you might notice that they end with an e. Now, if I want to change dance to dance to that past tense verb, I've already got the E there in the ED and I don't want to double the E, that would make an E digraph. So for dance, for example, for the root word, well, you could say it in two ways. We could say that we are taking the E away before adding ED, or because the E is already there, we are just then adding a D onto the end to change dance to dance. We don't need to add an extra E if there's one already there at the end. So for moved, MOV, I've already got the E at the end, so all I need to do is add the D. Now for these next two, skip and clap, hopefully some of you remembered about doubling the final consonant. You have to have a little look at what we call the penultimate letter, the one before the last letter. And in this case, in skip and in clap, I and A, they are short vowels. And if they're short vowels, we can't add the ED on straight away, because if I added an E to skip, I'd accidentally create a split digraph and make that into a longer vowel, skyped or clate, and I don't want that. So I've got to double the final consonant before I add ED. Let me show you how I do it. So for skipped, I'm going to rewrite the root word skip, but this time, because that penultimate letter, the one before the end, is a short vowel sound. Remember, those are A, E, I, O, U, or the short sounds would be A, E, I, O, U. I need to double this consonant, the P, before I add my ED. 
You might notice on, for example, weight, you might think, well, Mr. Preston, I is a vowel, uh, one before the end, but that's not the short vowel. Because of that digraph, that's the A, so it's not the short I sound in weight. So for clapped, for example, I would write out clapped again, or clap, but before I add ED, because I've got that A sound, I don't want to accidentally change it to an A by adding an E straight away, I've got to double the consonant before I add my E, D. Now onto the three chilies. I wonder if you notice something about copy and reply, those present tense verbs. What letter do they end with? That's right, they both have a Y. And hopefully you might have remembered that if you have a present tense verb that ends with a Y, like copy, we actually have to change that Y. Can you remember which letter we change it to? Hopefully you remember that it's an I. So instead of the Y, I'm gonna swap the Y for an I, before I add my ED to write copied. And the rules are the same for reply as well. Because reply ends in a Y, if I want to change it to a past tense verb, I need to change that Y for an I before adding ED. I wonder if you had a go at these two. Now these are very tricky because they break the rules. And you might have noticed with grow, you might Use that same rule again, I think growed. I growed some things in my garden. And then, well, that doesn't sound right. If I said that I was going to grow some in my garden, I did it yesterday, I'd actually say yesterday I grew plants in the garden. It actually, instead of a suffix, it changes the word. So actually, it's one of the unusual ones that break the rule, and the past tense of grow is grew. And then the most challenging one of all, the think, again, you might think that it's Thinked. Yesterday I thinked something, but again, that doesn't sound right. Let me put it into a sentence. Yesterday I thought about what I could plant in my garden. So the past tense of the verb think is thought. Not an easy spell, it's got a tetragraph in there. That's four letters making one sound in the middle. And I like to remember it as an O oh, U grumpy hippo word. Here's the or in the middle. Tetragraph, O U G. H, I remember that as an O-U grumpy hippo word. There are lots of those. Thought, I thought. How did you get on? Hopefully you remembered a few of those, but if not, no problem, they are tricky. And there's actually a brilliant game online that you can use to practice these, which I'm gonna show you now before we start our main activity. If you want to keep practicing spelling your past tense verbs at home, there's a great game you can play on a website called Phonics Play. Have a search for New Phonics Play because they've got two websites and the best one at the moment is New Phonics Play. And you'll see that it's also free for all the games at the moment during the lockdown. You've got a username and password there, March 20 and home. So you can use those to log in. And when you're on there, you're looking for penguins. Look for resources and we're going to go through to phase six. And in phase six, you should find past tense penguins. There we are. And once you press start, you can choose. The simple game has a few of those rules in, so that's kind of like your two chili challenge. And the tricky game, well, that's more like our three chili challenge, where, as you can see, each time it gives you a verb, you need to decide to change it to past tense, whether you need to just add ed, drop the e and then add ed, or just add a d, double the consonant, change the y to an i, and add ed, or do something different. So, for example, with this one, play, well, I can see with that one, I just add ED. So a great game you can practice with. Keep going back to it and hopefully you have fun with that as well. Now you've practiced adding the ED suffix, it's time for today's learning objective, which is also about using a suffix. It's to change adjectives into adverbs by adding the LY suffix. So adjectives, as we know, are words that describe Nouns, and I've got some examples of adjectives here. Quick, nervous, calm, brave, glad, swift, serious. They could all be used to describe a noun, a person, a place, a thing. Now, adverbs describe verbs. They describe how something is being done, and we can use the L-Y suffix to help us spell them correctly. They're great things to use in our writing because it really helps our reader get a clear picture of what's happening. For example, we could use this adjective to describe Jake the dog. Quick, Jake the dog was quick. Or we could change it into an adverb to describe how he does something. For example, how he escapes the garden when Mr. Gum comes out. Quickly, 
Jake jumped over the fence and ran away. Now, you'll see on our Steps to Success that our one chili challenge today is simply to add the ly suffix to the root word where there needs to be no change. So we're gonna have a little practice of that first. And I've got two here for me to have a practice. I'm gonna do my turn first and I'm gonna see if you can have a go as well. So my first adjective is quick. And using my steps to success to help, I know that if I want to change that into the adverb quickly, then I just need to add ly to the root word. Let me have a go. I should be able to spell the root word correctly because it's already there for me. So quick becomes quickly. And then I just need to add the ly suffix on the end. The adjective is quick. The adverb is quickly. Let me have one more go before it's your turn. For this one, my adjective is nervous. Could say Jake the dog was feeling nervous as he spotted Mr. Gum. If I wanted to change that into an, adject, an adverb to say that Jake the dog was doing something nervously, then I need to add that ly suffix at the end. So, if my adjective was nervous, then my adverb would be nervously. I need to re write the root word again and add the ly suffix. Remember a suffix or a suffix is a letters, a letters that go on the end of a word to change the meaning. Now it's your turn for one chili. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video. I'm going to move out of the way so you can see the step of success and either on a scrap piece of paper in your home learning book, could you change my adjectives into adverbs by adding the ly suffix and see which words you create. I've also, for this final one, just given you a challenge. I've already given you the adverb slowly. Could you work out what the root word was? What was the adjective, do you think? All right, pause the video now and then press play again when you've had a go and we'll look at some answers together. Good luck. How did you get on? Are you ready for some answers? Here you go. Hopefully, if you added the ly suffix to these adjectives, you will have created these adverbs. Calmly, bravely, gladly, swiftly, seriously, and you will have noticed with the adverb I gave you slowly, if you remove the ly suffix, then you'd be left with the original adjective. So the root word was slow. Well done if you did well on that. And I think you're ready for some two chilly spellings now. And here they are, the two chilly spellings for today. Now for this time, for my turn, I wonder whether you could maybe work out what's happening to the root word for me. Let me show you what I mean. Here I've got the adjective gentle. And it's changed to the adverb gently. Again, it's got that ly suffix at the end. But something's happened to the root word. And it's the same for this example. With the adjective happy being changed to that adverb, adverb happily, something has happened to the root word before the suffix has been added. Can you work out what it is? For this one, for gentle, the clue is that it ends with an E. And as you'll see on our step to success now, for the two chili spellings, if the adjective ends in LE, then you need to drop the E and just add the Y. Let me show you. Here is another adjective ending in L-E. Incredible. So I'm going to have a go at turning that into an adverb using that steps to success. Let me have a go. Now I know that the start of the root word will remain the same. Incredible. But before I add that E, I know that I've got to drop the E and then I can just add a Y. The L is already there, so all I need to do is add, an, add a Y, and I've got that fantastic adverb incredibly. Now for this one, for happy, the trick is, the clue is that happy is an adjective that ends with a Y. And again, as you'll see on our steps to success, if you find an adjective that ends with a Y, and you want to change it to an adverb by adding the L-Y suffix, you need to swap the Y for an I before you add the L-E. Oops, did I just say L-E? I obviously meant L-L-Y. Now that 
almost always is the case. There are always some anomalies, especially with if your adjective is one syllable. There are a couple like shyly and slyly where you actually keep the Y, but most of the time, and definitely when it's more than one symbol, it gets worse. Did I just say symbol? I meant syllable. Come on, Mr. P, get it together. You'll need to change that Y for an I. Let me show you in my turn. So I've got the adjective here, lazy. I can see that ends with a Y. So I know if I want to change that adverb to lazily, then I need to write out my root word again. However, I'm not going to write the Y because I'm going to swap it for an I before I add my L-Y suffix. And that leaves me with my adverb lazily. So now it's your turn. Here, for two chili, we've got a mixture of adjectives. You'll find some, the ND, some, the NY. I might even put one in there just to test what you remember from chili one as well. I'm going to move out of the way again so you can see the steps of success. And I'd like you, in your books, to try and write out the adverbs that you can make by adding the suffix to these adjectives. And again, at the end, I've actually given you the adverb already, miserably. I wonder if you can work out what the root word was, what the adjective was from that. Again. Pause the video, have a little go, and then play it again in a minute, and we'll share some answers. Good luck. How did you get on? Are you ready for the two chilli answers? Here you go. Here are the adjectives you had, and here are how you should have spelled the adverbs. I'll talk them through while maybe you check some of your work. For the adjective simple, that would change to simply, but because the adjective ends in an E, we need to drop that E and simply add the Y. Greedy ends with a Y, so we need to change that Y for an I before we add the LY to make greedily. Terrible ends in an E. Hopefully you spotted that and you knew that you needed to drop that E and then you only needed to add the Y on the end to make the adverb terribly. Now, I wonder if this caught any of you out because I snuck in honest and you might have noticed that was a one chilly word. You didn't, it didn't end in LE. It didn't end in a Y, so you didn't need to change it. All you needed to do was add the L-Y onto the root word to make the adverb honestly. This was a long one, responsible, ends L-E, so you need to drop that E to add the Y and make responsibly. Crazy, ends in a Y, so you need to swap that Y for an I before adding the L-Y suffix to make crazily. And finally, I gave the adverb miserably, and hopefully you worked out that the adjective, the root word in that adverb, is miserable. But, did you remember to put the E on the end because I would have taken that away before I added my L-Y suffix to make the adverb. Well done if you did a brilliant job with the two chilli challenges. Maybe some of you would like to go into spelling share and have a little practice of the two chilli ones first, but if you're feeling confident, stick around and we're about to look at some three chilli challenges. Okay. And here are today's three chilli spellings. They're hot today. I haven't even had to take my jumper off. So just like before, instead of me telling you what the rule is for the three chilli challenge, I wonder whether you could work it out for me by maybe, maybe pausing the video before I reveal what's on the steps to success under the three chilli challenge. Our three adjectives that I've used here, magic, specific and frantic, well I've already done two of the adverbs. I've changed magic to magically and specific to specifically. So I'd like you maybe to pause the video now, have a little look if you can spot something in common with these adjectives, what's the same about them, and what's happened to them to become adverbs? Have I had to change the root word at all? What, have, what, um, what letters have I added at the end to change them? Pause, have a go, and then we'll have a look together. All right, are you ready for us to see what's on the step of success? Here we go. So hopefully you noticed that these three adjectives all ended with IC, magic, specific, and frantic. And it shows here that if an adjective ends with IC, you don't need to change the root word at all, that's the good news, but instead of adding LY, you actually need to add four letters, A-L-L-Y, to make the adverb, as you can see here. Magic, specific, frantic, all end with IC. So for magically and specifically, We've had to add four letters at the end, A-L-L-Y. Now it's my turn to have a go with this adjective, frantic. I want to change that to the adverb frantically. So I know I need to write the root word again because if it ends in I-C, I don't actually need to alter the root word at all, but I know instead of adding L-Y at the end, I need to add A-L-L-Y. 
Y as well to make frantically. So now it's your turn for the three chilies. Uh, but just to make it more tricky, it'd be easy if I made them all end in IC. This is gonna test everything you've learned so far. So it's got one chili, two chili, and three chili in there. So you need to look at the adjective, think about the rules. I'm gonna move so you'll be able to see the steps of success when you pause the video. Choose your method, choose how you're gonna change your ground verb, and then press play again once you've finished, and we'll look at some answers together. Good luck. Should we have a look at some answers? Here you go. So these are the adjectives and these are the correct spellings of the adverbs. You can use these to check your spellings now. For example, basic, hopefully you spotted that it ends in the IC, so that's one of the ones from our three chili challenge where we need to add A-L-L-Y to change it to basically. Humble ends with L-E, so we need to drop the E and just add the Y to make humbly. Steady, ends with a Y, so before we add the L-Y, we need to change that Y for an I. Historic, hopefully you spotted that it ends in I-C, just like magic, specific and frantic. So again, it's a three chilli one where we need to add the A-L-L-Y suffix to change it into historically. Fair, hopefully that one didn't catch you up, because that's another one where you don't need to make any changes to the root word. It's one of those one chilli ones where actually all you need to do is add the L-Y to change that into fairly. Possible, I can see ends with an L-E, so we just need to remove the E and add the Y to make possibly. Necessary, that's a tricky spelling. I always remember that as it is necessary for a shirt to have one collar and two sleeves, and that's the one C for collar and two S's for sleeves. And then if I want to change that to necessarily to the adverb, then all I need to do, because it ends in a Y, remove that Y, swap it for an I, and add the L Y at the end, necessarily. And finally, automatic, well that one, is another adjective with IC at the end, so we don't need to change the root word. All you need to do is add A-L-L-Y to find your adverb. Well done today, I'm sure you've all done a brilliant job and I hope you've enjoyed making these adverbs. Maybe next time you do a piece of writing, you might use some of these adverbs to make it fantastic, making sure you spell those adverbs correctly, of course. Now, before you go, I'd just like to show you two ways that you could practice these spellings even more this week. The first way we'd like you to practice your spelling today is by using Spelling Shed. Go to spellingshed.com and log in using your logging details that you can find in the inside front cover of your home learning book. If you ever need a reminder about your login details for any of the online learning, just give your year band an email. Ruby in 3H has kindly let me use hers today, so I'm going to go to the web game and go to play for Spelling Shed. When you're on here, if you look in more lists, you'll find the list that your teachers might have allocated for you. You can see that I've allocated these three, OP31 is me. If you can't see it straight away, you might need to go through some of the pages to find it, but you'll see it's got the date, 11th of May, LY suffix, and you can choose one chili, two chili, or three chili, which match the one, two, and three chili challenges that we did in our lesson. When you go on, there are two options that you can do. You'll see the list of words to have a look at, and you can press play, and you could choose two. The two best options are either to play, it will tell you the word greedily. greedily and you can try and spell it. Now I know for greedily normally it ends in a Y but I remember from my steps to success that I've got to then swap that for an I before I add my L Y. The other option is to go on the beekeeper. So we'll go to the list again and I'll go for one chili this time. And if you go to beekeeper this is like hangman. So you'll you can guess the letters and try and guess your spelling word before the bees and the flowers run out now let's have a think i'm gonna guess i think it will end in an l y i know that much let's see so let's guess some of the letters e is always very popular oh no there's no e s g c m oh, i'm not doing very well here so far o p t r well, this is going to be embarrassing now if I lose on the um, guide. Oh, F, A, I think it might be fairly. Ah, there we go. And don't forget that you can always check up here on the leagues to see where you are in your class as well. Wow, well done, Riley. It's going to take some work this week to beat Riley. Okay, there's your first activity for today. I hope you have fun playing on it.
The second way you might like to practice your spellings this week is by playing a memory game with some other people in your house. What you'll need is some pieces of card or paper cut up and you can write some of your spelling words on the back. Perhaps write down the ones that you'll find particularly tricky. Lay them out on the floor where both of you can see them. You could play in twos or threes or fours. And then take it in turns to read them out loud. Fairly, magically, slowly, basically, happily. And then take it in turns. One of you can close, their, one of you can close your eyes and the second person can turn one over and then the partner can open their eyes again and they've got two jobs. Firstly, they have to notice which one has been turned over and then secondly, to earn a point, they have to write it down themselves but of course they have to spell it correctly. After they've done it, turn it back over, read the word, check it spelled correctly and that person can have a point. Then, next person can have a go. Turn the one over for them and see if they can earn a point by spelling it correctly. Now, I haven't got any humans to play with today, unfortunately, so I've had to come outside to play with my glamorous spelling assistant who is trying to eat the Sharpie pen. Don't do that, please. That's not food. I'll give you a strawberry if you can get the correct adverb right. Okay, I'm going to turn one over, Horatio, and I want you to write it down correctly. Are you ready? Off you go. See if you can write that on your board. Quick as you can, come on. Excellent, well done. The missing one was, let's see if you got it right. It was slowly, great job. I would like you to join your letters next time, please, Horatio, if you wouldn't mind. Well done, Super Speller. You've earned your strawberries. <laughs>